Hello and welcome to Math Zone African Motives. In this tutorial, we're going to dive into question two from the November 2022 Mathematics National Senior Certificate exam paper. This question covers a range of essential differentiation techniques, and by the end of this video, you will be able to, first, you'll be able to determine a derivative from first principles. Second, you'll be able to apply the quotient rule to differentiate a logarithmic function. Third, you'll learn to differentiate a complex trigonometric function using the chain rule. Fourth, we'll cover how to find a derivative using logarithmic differentiation, which is especially useful for functions that have variables in both the base and the exponent. And finally, you will be able to find the derivative of an implicit function. We'll work through each part step by step using clear, color-coded visuals. Let's get started. Our first problem is question 2-1. The question asks us to find the derivative of f of x, which equals 4x minus 3, divided by x plus 2 from first principles. The key here is from first principles. This means we must use the formal definition of the derivative. The formula, highlighted in blue, is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. This is the foundation of calculus representing the slope of a line tangent to the curve. So our first step is to calculate f of x plus h by substituting x plus h into our function. We replace every x in the original function with x plus h. This gives us four times the quantity x plus h minus three, divided by the quantity x plus h plus two. Now we substitute f of x plus h and our original f of x into the first principles formula. This gives us a complex fraction. The numerator of the main fraction is the quantity f of x plus h minus f of x, and the denominator is h. Our goal is to simplify this expression. Let's focus on the numerator. We need to combine the two fractions by finding a common denominator. The common denominator is the product of the two denominators. We multiply the terms to get 4x plus 4h minus 3 times x plus 2, minus the quantity 4x minus 3 times x plus h plus 2. Next, we expand both products in the numerator. Let's do the first product. Expanding the first set of brackets gives us 4x squared plus 5x plus 4xh plus 8h minus 6. And now for the second product. Expanding the second set gives us 4x squared plus 5x plus 4xh minus 3h minus 6. It's crucial to keep this in brackets, as we'll be subtracting it. Now we can simplify the entire numerator by subtracting the second expression from the first. Notice that many terms cancel out. The 4x squared, the 5x, the 4xh, and the minus 6 all disappear. We are left with 8h minus negative 3h, which simplifies to 11e. So our numerator has simplified to 11h. Let's put this back into our original limit. The expression becomes the limit as h approaches 0 of the fraction 11 to each, all divided by the product x plus h plus 2, and x plus 2, and then this entire fraction is divided by h. We can rewrite the division by h as multiplication by its reciprocal 1 over h. When we do this, the h in the numerator and the h in the denominator cancel each other out. Now we have an expression where we can safely substitute h equals 0 without causing division by 0. We substitute h equals 0, which leaves us with 11 divided by the product of x plus 2 and x plus 2. This simplifies to our final answer, 11 divided by the quantity x plus 2 squared. Let's check this with the memo. The memo also gives the answer 11 over x plus 2 squared. So we can confidently say that our answer is verified using the memo. Next up is question 2.2y. We need to find the derivative of y equals the natural log of the quantity 2x plus 1 over 2x minus 1 plus 2 times the inverse tangent of 2x. This time, we don't need to simplify the answer. The first term looks complicated because of the fraction inside the natural log. We can make this much simpler by using a fundamental property of logarithms. The property, highlighted in blue, states that the natural log of a quotient is the same as the natural log of the numerator minus the natural log of the denominator. Applying this, we can rewrite our function y. So y becomes the natural log of 2x plus 1 minus the natural log of 2x minus 1 plus 2 times the inverse tangent of 2x. This is now a sum and difference of simpler functions, making differentiation much easier. Now let's list the differentiation formulas we'll need for each term. First, for the natural log, 
The derivative of ln of u is u prime over u. Second, for inverse tangent, the derivative of tan inverse of u is u prime over 1 plus u squared. The u in both cases represents the function inside the log or inverse tangent. Let's differentiate the first term, ln of 2x plus 1. Here u is 2x plus 1. The derivative u prime is 2, so the derivative is 2 divided by 2x plus 1. Next, the second term, negative ln of 2x1. Similarly, u is 2x minus 1, and u prime is 2. The derivative is negative 2 divided by 2x minus 1. Finally, the third term, 2 times the inverse tangent of 2x. Here u is 2x, and u prime is 2. Using the formula, we get 2 times the derivative, which is 2 divided by 1 plus 2x squared. Multiplying by 2, we get 4 divided by 1 plus 2x squared. Now, we just combine these three derivatives to get our final answer. Di slash slash dx is the sum of our three results. 2 over 2x plus 1, minus 2 over 2x1, plus 4 over 1 plus 2x squared. Since the question said simplification is not required, we can leave the answer in this form. Let's compare this to the memo. The memo gives a slightly different looking answer because they didn't use the logarithm property first. However, if you were to simplify our answer, you would get the memo's answer. Since we followed the instructions, our answer is correct. We've simplified our work by using the logarithm property. So even though it looks different, our answer is mathematically equivalent and correct based on the no simplification instruction. We've verified it. Moving on to question 2.22. Here we are asked to find the derivative of y equals the quantity sine of tangent of cosine of x cubed, all raised to the power of 5. This is a classic example of a nested function, which means we will need to use the chain rule multiple times. The chain rule, highlighted in blue, tells us to differentiate from the outside in. We start with the outermost function, which is the power of 5. The chain rule states that the derivative of a composite function is the derivative of the outer function with respect to the inner function times the derivative of the inner function. Let's apply this. The outermost layer is something to the power of 5. The derivative of u to the 5 is 5 times u to the 4. So we bring the power of 5 down as a coefficient and reduce the exponent by 1. This gives us 5 times the entire inner function to the power of 4. Now, we must multiply by the derivative of that inner function which is sine of tangent of cosine of x cubed. Now we differentiate the next layer, which is the sine function. The derivative of sine is cosine. We keep the other parts the same and multiply by the cosine of tangent of cosine x cubed. Again, we must multiply by the derivative of the new inner function, which is tangent of cosine x cubed. The next layer is tangent. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. We get secant squared of cosine x cubed and we multiply by the derivative of its inner function, which is cosine of x cubed. The next layer is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we multiply by negative sine of x cubed, and then by the derivative of its inner function, which is x cubed. The innermost layer is x cubed. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared using the power rule. Finally, we multiply by 3x squared. Now we put all the pieces together. The question stated we don't need to simplify, so we can just write the product. Our final answer, in green, is 5 times the quantity sine of tan of cos of x cubed to the power of 4, times cos of tan of cos of x cubed, times secant squared of cos of x cubed, times negative sine of x cubed, times 3x squared. The memo presents the terms in a different order, but our answer contains all the same factors and signs. The order of multiplication does not change the result. Therefore, our answer is verified using the memo. We've reached question 2.3. We need to calculate di dx for the function y equals 2x plus 1 to the power of sin of 4x. The key instruction here is to use the aid of logarithmic differentiation. Logarithmic differentiation is required because the variable x appears in both the base and the exponent. Taking the natural logarithm of both sides will allow us to use a log property to bring the exponent down. We start by taking the natural logarithm of both sides of the equation y equals 2x plus 1 to the sin force. Now we use the power rule for logarithms, highlighted in blue. 
This rule states that the natural log of an expression raised to a power is equal to the power times the natural log of the expression. Applying this to our equation, the exponent sin force comes to the front. This transforms the equation into ln y equals sin 4x times ln 2x plus 1. This expression is a product of two functions of x, which we can now differentiate using the product rule. Now we differentiate both sides with respect to x. Remember that we are differentiating with respect to x, so we'll need to use the chain rule for the left side, which contains the variable y. The derivative of ln y is 1 over y times di y. For the right side, we use the product rule, highlighted in blue. Let's identify u and v for the product rule. Let u be sin for x and v be ln 2x plus 1. The derivative of u, u prime is 4 c equals 4x. The derivative of v, v prime is 2 over 2x plus 1. Now we can apply the product rule to the right side of our equation. The right side becomes u prime times v plus u times v prime. This gives us 4 c equals 4x times ln 2x plus 1 plus sin 4x times 2 over 2x plus 1. The last step is to solve for di slash dx. To do this, we multiply both sides by y. This gives us di dx equals y times the quantity we just calculated on the right side. The final step is to substitute back the original expression for y, which was 2x plus 1, to the sin 4. Replacing it with its original expression gives us our final answer, highlighted in green, 2x plus 1 to the sin 4x, multiplied by the bracketed expression. The memo's answer matches ours perfectly. Therefore, our solution is verified using the memo. We've reached the final question, 2.4. We are given the implicit function cosec inverse of x plus cot inverse of the quantity x plus y equals pi. Our task is to determine di uh, dx. Since the equation is not explicitly solved for y, we'll use implicit differentiation. This means we differentiate each term with respect to x, remembering to use the chain rule on terms containing y. First, we need the derivative formulas for inverse cosecant and inverse cotangent. The derivative of cosec inverse of x is negative 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. The derivative of cot inverse of u is negative u prime over 1 plus u squared. Let's apply these to our equation, differentiating each term. The derivative of pi, a constant, is 0. We get the derivative of the first term plus the derivative of the second term equals 0. Let's analyze the derivative of cot inverse of x plus y. Here u is x plus y, so its derivative, u prime, is 1 plus di slash dx. This is why we have 1 plus di x in the numerator of the second term. Now we need to rearrange this equation to solve for di slash dx. Let's move the first term to the right side of the equation. Subtracting the derivative of cosec inverse x from both sides gives us negative 1 plus di gake over 1 plus xy squared equals positive 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. To isolate the term containing di slash dx, we multiply both sides by negative 1 plus x with y squared. This leaves us with 1 plus di dx equals the negative of the quantity 1 plus got y squared all over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. Finally, we subtract 1 from both sides to get our final expression for di des. The result is di by ad x equals negative 1 plus x dash y squared divided by the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1 all minus 1. The memo's answer is identical, which means our calculation is correct. The answer is verified using the memo. And that concludes our walkthrough of question two. We have successfully applied five different differentiation techniques. We found a derivative from first principles, used the product rule and log properties, differentiated complex nested functions with the chain rule, mastered logarithmic differentiation for exponential functions, and handled implicit differentiation. Each of these is a crucial skill in calculus. Thank you for watching this tutorial from Math Zone African Motives. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. For more detailed step-by-step -step solutions and tutorials, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.